Okay, this is take 10. Yep. My name is David, and this is my Asteroids game. So I made this for the Ubisoft NXT programming challenge that took place this weekend. I think it's the first time that they're hosting this for programmers. They've done it before for artists. My roommate took place in it. He's, uh, he, he did pretty well too, I think. And uh, so this is, this is my time to shine, because I'm a programmer. And, uh, and it's actually a uh, gameplay programmer position. And uh, this is pretty cool because, you know what, I like to sort of uh, learn something new every day and I'm not really a gameplay programmer, I'm more of an engines programmer. And uh, it really helped me through this challenge though because um, I wasn't given too much to begin with. I was giving uh, one initialize function, this was called once, an update loop, a render loop, and then a cleanup function. Okay, and not even a console window. I, I could have put a, I could have attached one, but I didn't want to go into their engine too much and, and change too many things. But I did change one thing. I'll show you. I added this. Shh, don't tell them. Anyway, um, uh, so what I did was I created an entity component system minus the system. So basically, all of the objects that you are about to see on the screen, those are entities, and then uh, entities will take care of rendering. Components are the things that don't need to be rendered. So I don't have too many components. I have transformation components and a gun component. Although arguably transform is the most important component in the game. The transform is actually a wrapper to my uh, vector math class that I wrote uh, yesterday and the uh, matrix math and it's what handles all of the movement on the screen. Um, so it's so lots of math, but um, yeah, it, it really worked out well because I was doing all of this with um, lines, drawing lines on the screen, and the best way to get lines where you want them to is to multiply all of their points by a matrix, transformation matrix. Um, so this is, uh, this is sort of all done immediate mode open GL. So I wasn't writing any shaders, so all this matrix math is done just on the CPU, which is fine, I guess, for, it's fine. So anyway. Uh, we'll go into the game now, and uh, and I'll talk about you know stuff as we're playing, and maybe I'll just turn this down a little bit. It is quite loud, and I want you guys to be able to hear me. Uh, it's already turned down. This game is ridiculously loud. Okay, so and we'll move it in the middle. Great. So yeah, one thing I've done is I've made this game multiplayer. So the original Asteroids was not multiplayer. This one can support four players, and it works best with Xbox controller, although if you want, it does have support for WASD and arrow keys and spacebar and enter. Um, enter for the menu, spacebar to shoot. But the controls for the Xbox controller are written across the bottom. And then I also have some special information with regards to one of the bullets that you can actually obtain through an upgrade. It's the missile upgrade, and it is a little bit different from everything else because you actually need to target a whole bunch of asteroids before you can fire at them. You need to, you need to use these heat-seeking rockets on these. They're probably cold space rocks, but whatever. Let's just pretend it makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, let's go. So joining me is my roommate Ash, and uh, he's gonna help me demo this off. He's, He's going to be player one. I'm the cyan player at the bottom there. And, uh, yeah, okay, that was pretty fast. Don't know if you saw it, but at the very beginning of the round, um, it says, shields online. Great, what does that mean? That means that you can't die uh, for about, like, one second. After that, you know, uh, anything goes. Like, like you got to be careful. Oh, here's the missile. Okay, so this is... No! <laughs> this is, uh, okay. Uh, this is my favorite weapon in the entire game. It was the most fun to program, and it's really fun to use. So you just sort of aim in a particular direction, and it will, uh, and it will shoot uh, bullets. So however many you're aiming at, it'll shoot that many bullets, and then they will do their best to follow it. The bullets, um, the bullets, they have this little wiggle to them, um, sort of like uh, if they were actually heat-seeking missiles. Um, that's how I imagine, you know, missiles would look. They'd have a bit of a wiggle to them, trying to follow their target. Um, and this is one of six weapons in the game. The uh, first weapon that you start with, that's your stock gun. 
Um, and then the next the next weapon up, if I had to categorize them by power, is the uh, the cannon. Okay, so if I see the cannon, I'll, I'll mention it again. The next one after that is the shotgun. Um, it's pretty straightforward what the shotgun is. Uh, after that is... Yeah, here's the shotgun, actually. So, yeah. Shotgun, shotgun makes short work of all these giant um, asteroids. And also groups of small asteroids uh, stand no chance against the shotgun. The laser, this one here, um, Ash will get it. It's it's arguably, it is the most powerful one in the game. It's just a little bit unbalanced, which is why it's so awesome. See, if you had a real laser, it would just cut through everything. And uh, at least at least with this laser, um, you have a chance to sort of get through those little cracks, the openings there. Um, but it's pretty fun to use. It's pretty fun to use. Now this is co-op. It supports four players. I don't have four players to test with, but I'm gonna trust that it works, and uh, so so I'm gonna advertise it. It's four players. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh yeah, so oh wow, that was that was really unfortunate. Uh, at the top left, it shows you which weapon you have. At the top center, uh, it shows you how many lives you have. The lives are shared between everyone playing the game, so this is co-op. I can't shoot my buddy here. Um, I can shoot the asteroids. Um, and it's not a competition for score. Uh, we, we're both trying to obtain the high score together. So the most recent high score is at the top there, uh, 45,626. We're gonna start round two and uh, see, see what happens. Um, we have three asteroids in the scene. Okay, so, so I know that you guys might be thinking, oh, but David, each asteroid is like, you know, three smaller asteroids, and each of those are three smaller asteroids. But it's it's only it's only actually counting the amount of asteroids, you know, the amount of total asteroids. Oh, here we go. We haven't seen this one yet, have we? Oh, I died. Okay, so just rewind a bit, and that was the uh, figure eight gun. And wow, we did terrible. Six thousand eight hundred and sixty-three. So, so um, we went down what, like forty thousand there? 000, yes. Yeah, forty thousand. We're not very good at this. But, um, yeah, so that's my Asteroids game. Um, I hope you enjoyed. You can stop watching now, but I will keep talking about COVID. Um, what do you guys want to hear about? So, the tech behind my game. So, I have a lot of entities. Anything that you saw drawn on the screen is an entity. The entities actually have, um, they all, they all actually inherit from this entity class. And then, um, I've got four functions. So these correspond to the four functions that you saw inside of game test, the file I was given by Ubisoft. And uh, the release function will clean up and draw, uh, update, and initialize. But I don't actually call these inside game test. So what I do is, um, for most entities, I actually initialize them inside the constructor because they are created um, at, at runtime. Initialize, initialize I've used it um, mainly for uh, things things that spawn uh, when the scene starts so so the player um, and uh, and the, the star field you see in the background is actually an entity as well so it's down here um, and the game states so this is this is inheriting from the entities class right but it's not actually an uh, entity that gets spawned in it's a little bit different so I mean I, I built this system so I know how it works so I, I took a little risk here and I made a uh, I made it a singleton, so so I took the uh, constructors here, made them private, and uh, you can only get the instance this way. So I do this, and uh, this is the only uh, include file you might see that I have inside of this uh, game test here. So what what this lets me do is um um so here here what I'm doing this looks like it's a, a blank call it's actually creating it though and then it does some stuff in the back end this code here just prevents people from resizing the window because I did not actually put in any aspect ratio correction and a lot of my logic is um, hard-coded to the virtual screen which I wouldn't want to resize so um, asteroids okay so this is where I delete entities uh, what do I mean by that well, basically, um, when I'm when I'm running the game, you have like thousands of bullets, and if those go off the screen, right? I don't want to keep doing their logic and drawing them off the screen, right? So I get rid of them. 
So what I do is I actually set them all to null in the entity list. And then this, this function actually does an uh, erase remove idiom, which will just check for all of the null pointers and then just delete those. So I, I think the way this works is the remove is going to go through the list, look for the null pointers, and then it's going to move them all back to the end and then erase everything after that because this is all going to remove a vector iterator, which will, which will be the you know end of the list after all nulls have been moved to back. And uh, update here delta time. So the delta time here was like 16, which is milliseconds. I prefer working with seconds. So this was a quick fix. And then over here, um, if the game is paused, delta time is set to be multiplied by zero. And uh, all of my logic, I'm so used to this, all of my logic is um, stems from delta time. All of the movement is based off of uh, you know, velocities, physics, fake physics. So, so that that's all using delta time here. Render, pretty straightforward. Actually, rendering, um, draw line, print. I do another one too. It's called um, points. Yeah, points. Points actually, real, a little bit strange to do for some reason. Drawing a line from point A to point A didn't really work. Uh, it turns out you need to specify point size. So there's a function here called uh, gl point size. I'm not. I don't. I don't normally work with points um, in OpenGL. For I mean, I, I mean, I. I'm not really. That's not really my specialty. Points. Uh, but I learned something new. Uh, okay. So and then the shutdown code here. Everything gets released, and then I have a debug logging file that is actually on the desktop here. Um, goes to a folder that, that is right here. So debug log. And it's empty right now, which is good. Um, OK, let's see. What else can I talk about? The bullet class, maybe? So I have some constants up here. My constructor. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit. The update function boundary. This is actually this is all logic that I use for um, screen wrap and also in case the, it wants to destroy when it goes off the screen. So um, so the bullets have the options to do both. In fact, these bullets are extremely flexible. Um, I use the exact same bullet script for a uh, for missiles as I do for the standard P shooter you see at the beginning there. Um, they have so many variables that can control them. That wiggle there, yeah, so that can actually be manipulated enough to actually get it to spin in a circle around another bullet, right? And, uh, and then they can target objects as well, so they can follow them. You can change their speed. Well, I mean, you know, that's probably the most basic property you would expect from a bullet class. I have particles. I named them dead particle because Originally, it would only happen when the player dies, but I actually use it for the upgrades as well, so just ignore that name there. Game states, I talked about that. Player, this is a massive, massive class, which is just, most of this was just trial and error. Put some code in, it doesn't feel right, you know, so change the code up a little bit, and, uh, and then I tried cleaning it up at the end there. Um, but for the most part, um, most of this was it felt uh, a little bit rushed, but that's that's the thing with game jams and uh, competitions like this. So I've I've competed in lots of game jams. I've used my own personal C++ engines for a few. Most of them I've used Unity um, because my teammates that I work with prefer Unity. But this was solo, so um, I, I I went all out. This is my uh, actually where where is it? Um, down here. Um. So my matrix math class, um, I've, I've written lots of matrix math classes in the past. This one is uh, very heavily based off one that I wrote in Java. Um, so I just, it was pretty straightforward to copy it over though. Um, and, and then to make all the necessary changes. Um, the, so it was, it was a lot of changes I had to do here. And then this vector two class, this is completely new. Like I, I wrote this from scratch and uh, uh, I use my debug logs. These get these get compiled out though later on in release mode. These are just stub functions. Um, I've templated the entire thing here. So this is a. Uh, I've I've always had issues getting templated classes to work inside of the source files so, uh, outside of the header file, but um, th 
this is the solution down here. You just have to sort of tell the compiler, oh, generate it for integers, floats and doubles. That's 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 what it did. Um, what else should I talk about? Maybe I'll just play the game one more time, and then I'll let you guys go. Well, I mean, you could like like leave whenever you want, but okay. So, um, shields offline. Got my stock gun. So all this music um, is actually I I wrote it. Um, and in fact, I didn't really have to do much to write it. I just hold my finger down on the synthesizer. I have a synthesizer, so that was pretty much the extent of the music I did. It was it was really fun. Holy moly! So I don't know if you saw that. There were like 50 things I was targeting right there. It's crazy. This is this is arguably my favorite weapon in the entire game. Is the uh, missile launcher? It's just so crazy. And then I've got the blaster again. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, game as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you all next year.